So the other day I had a bunch of stuff stolen from my car, including my MacBook, iPad, cameras, microphones, and a bunch of other things. And it got me thinking that if I genuinely lost everything like my YouTube channel and my team and all of the dollar in the business bank account and all of the gear and potentially even all the skills that I have, how would I get started rebuilding things from the ground up? Would I start a YouTube channel or a blog or a business or even a TikTok account? By the way, please follow me on TikTok. And so this video is gonna be my step-by-step -step guide to how I would actually build wealth and passive income and an audience and all that fun stuff from the ground up if I had to start from scratch. Let's start by talking about three foundational principles of building this sort of stuff from scratch and then we'll have the five, I think, steps that build on top of that. Principle number one is to build in public in a way that helps build an audience. Now having an audience, having an audience of people who know, like, and trust you, whether it's people on YouTube or TikTok or Twitter or your email list, that's like a generally useful thing because when you have this, these people who know, like, and trust you, it means you can then monetize that audience further down the line if you really want to, but it also means that you have like more friends and a network and connections that's just generally nice and wholesome and friendly. And the best way of building an audience is to provide value to those people. The problem is that providing value is like a bit, a bit like nebulous. Like what does providing value even mean? How do you figure out what kind of value you provide? And so an easy way to build the right sort of audience is to like when, when you're starting from scratch and building your thing, to build it in public, i.e. to document the journey of building your thing. And so if I were to start any new business from scratch or a YouTube channel or a blog or a book or of any kind of venture, I would be documenting the process and like writing down or maybe, maybe even making YouTube videos or blog posts about what it's like to do that, what resources I'm using, what interesting things I've learned. Every time I read a book that helps me with my business, I would be summarizing the key insights from that book that really helped me and putting it out for free out there on a blog and then sharing the link on Twitter or my Facebook page or my Instagram page or anything that helps get the word out that, hey, this is me, I'm building in public and you can follow along for the journey if you like. That leads us on to principle number two, which is to provide value first and do not expect quick returns. Let's hear from one of my mentors from afar, Gary Vaynerchuk, on this point. I was very focused on leveling up and I really believe the one great piece of advice, if, if you wanna take anything from this talk, is we have to start realizing that giving and doing things in business without expectation of return from the other individual is probably the greatest leverage that you could ever deploy in your business life, though it is extremely rare in today's business environment. And it has absolutely been the bedrock of what has allowed me to win. And so what Gary's saying here basically is that provide value without the expectation of anything in return. And so while building my business, I'd be providing value as we're gonna talk about in the steps, but I'd also be building in public, documenting my journey. And all of this would be without the expectation of anything in return. I would not be trying to sell anything to my audience. I wouldn't be trying overly hard to be pushy and get them to sign up to my mailing list. I would be creating this value, creating this content, without the expectation of anything in return. And weirdly, by doing that, as a side effect, I'm gonna build up an audience of people who know, like, and trust me alongside. And principle number three is that whatever I'm doing, I wanna target a market that's filled with people that I actually care about. So for example, if it was me, the market I'd be targeting is YouTubers, creators, bloggers, these sort of like creative entrepreneur type people on the internet. And I'd be trying my best to build a business around that specific audience. I wouldn't particularly try and build a business for new mums because I have no experience of what it's like being a new mum, but I've got friends who are new mums who are very, very familiar with that audience who love hanging out with new moms, and therefore it would make sense for them to build a business around that particular audience. And there's a really nice quote from Steve Jobs where he talks about this idea of passion. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. And then our late friend Steve goes on to say that if you look at anyone who's kind of successful by society's definitions, normally they found a way to enjoy the thing that they're doing and they loved it so much that and that was what allowed them to persevere. And so coming back to this idea of building a business from scratch, one way to increase our odds of enjoying the thing that we're doing is to target the right sort of audience, to build a business for the people that we already care about rather than for a completely new audience that we have no empathy or enjoyment with. So those were the three foundational principles. Let's now get into the five kind of actionable-ish practical steps that I would take if I was starting from scratch. Step one is that I would learn a monetizable skill that helps the people that I care about. In my case, the people that I care about would be creators, YouTubers, bloggers, those sorts of people. Pro probably YouTubers, given that I have so much familiarity with that space and I can empathize with the needs of them and I enjoy hanging out with YouTubers and it's just like cool people generally. And so I'd be trying to learn a skill that can help YouTubers. Now, what are the skills that can help YouTubers? Well, the, the first one is video editing. Every YouTuber beyond a certain size needs help with their video editing. And so if you can provide them a service as a video editor for their videos, 
You can make friends with that YouTuber, make friends with their network, and that's a way of building a business around this idea of creators. Secondly, every YouTuber needs thumbnails. If you're into graphic design, you can become a thumbnail artist. Thirdly, a lot of YouTubers need their stuff on YouTube converted into blog posts. This is something that I do for my website, something my friend Thomas Frank does as well. A lot of YouTubers know they should be doing this, but there's no one out there who says to them, hey, look, I will literally write up all your videos as blog posts for your website, and this will be really great for your SEO and that kind of stuff. Fourthly, a lot of YouTubers want their stuff written up as Twitter threads so they can grow on Twitter. Again, no one really provides a service, so if you can be the person providing that service to YouTubers, i.e. a skill that is monetizable, then you're adding a lot of value, leading with value, and you're building a business around this niche of YouTubers or creators that you personally care about. And so if it were me and I didn't know how to edit videos, what I would do is I would get a part-time job and I'd be saving up about 700 pounds to get a second-hand MacBook. And then I would learn how to edit videos on iMovie by following either my Skillshare class, which you can access for free in the video description, or by following free YouTube tutorials. And then over a few weeks, by doing this a few hours a day, I'd get pretty solid at video editing and then I'd be able to move on to step two. So step two is that once you've figured out what this market is that you care about, who are these people that you wanna be friends with? Step two is to work for them for free without permission and while documenting the journey. And I think it's the for free part here that's crucial because if you're, if I was just starting learning video editing and I wasn't that good and I didn't have a portfolio and I didn't have a track record, I couldn't really approach a YouTuber and say, hey, I want you to pay me to edit your videos because like, why would they take a chance on me what I would do instead is I would email a bunch of YouTubers that I like, you know, smaller YouTubers, but also bigger YouTubers just in case. Most of the bigger ones already have editors, but certainly I'd be emailing smaller YouTubers somewhere between the 10K to 100K subscriber range. And I'd be saying to them, hey, you're a YouTuber, I love your content. I really like something very specific about your content. So the email or the Twitter DM or Instagram DM like, speaks to them because it's like, you've put some thought into this. It's not just a copied and pasted message. And I'd be saying to them that, look, I want to edit your next video for you completely for free. All you have to do is send me a Dropbox or a Google Drive or a WeTransfer link with the, with the raw files and I will create an edit for you in your style completely for free. Uh, and you can have it and you can use it on your channel. And if you like it, then we can talk about maybe working with me on a paid basis further down the line. Now, if you do this with enough people, there's almost no way that someone isn't gonna to reply to you and be like, all right, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. You're offering to do this for free. Here is a Google Drive link to my raw footage for my latest video. Let's see what you can do. And now you have a project. You're working for free and you've someone has given you the chance where you've got the ability to actually edit their video in as best a way as you can. Now, video editing does require permission. You do need to email someone and ask them to send you their raw files because most YouTubers don't like publicize their raw files. But there are things that you can do completely without permission as well. One of those things is creating thumbnails. So you can find a YouTuber or a bunch of YouTubers channels that you like, and you can redesign the thumbnails for them based on what their current style is. And you can email them being like, hey, you know, here are some thumbnails I designed. These might be an alternative to these, these sorts of thumbnails. I think they would work better than the current thumbnails you've got because of reasons A, B, and C. And I've had, Two people in the past four years reach out to me that way by physically redesigning thumbnails for my stuff and saying, hey, why don't you try out these new thumbnails? In both occasions, I was like, oh, okay, this person has gone through the effort of already doing the work for me. And so I just ran A-B tests using TubeBuddy, which lets you test thumbnails. In the end, it turned out that those two people, their thumbnails were worse than my ones were anyway. But the principle was good. Like, I, I re really respect the hustle of them emailing me with the work already done. So it was very easy for me to say yes to. And now if you're a thumbnail designer, you can do this with basically any YouTuber. YouTubers are always on the lookout for like, what is the best thumbnail for my video? And so if someone does the work for them and you can say, hey, you can use TubeBuddy to AP test it, link to TubeBuddy in the video description if you wanna check it out, free trial, et cetera, et cetera. They can literally test the thumbnail and see if it performs better. And that is the ultimate way of testing, are your skills as a thumbnail designer good enough? And if not, you can just improve those skills over time. Equally, let's say you wanna be a writer and create Twitter threads for people. You can reach out to your favorite YouTuber and say, hey, this video that you made about like, eight habits of being a millionaire. I've actually converted that into a tweet thread for you that you can just copy and paste onto Twitter and then that'll help you grow your Twitter audience. What do you think? If you like it, let me know. Uh, and we can talk about potentially working together further down the line. These are ways that you can work for the people you care about, in my case, YouTubers, without asking them necessarily for permission. And you can do it for free to get your foot in the door. And then of course, while doing all this, I'd be documenting the journey. I'd be having my own YouTube channel where I talk about, all right guys, I've just sent 18 emails today to my favorite YouTubers. Let's see who responds. Oh my God, this person responded. All right, time to edit that video. I'd be documenting the journey. And if starting a YouTube channel is too hard, I just do it through the form of a blog and Twitter threads and stuff like that. And so step two, work for free free for your favorite people like this target market that you care about. Do it without permission if you can and document your journey while doing so. And then once we've done enough of that, we now have a portfolio. So I'd be building like a personal website using something like Ghost or Squarespace or Notion or there's all sorts of free ways to build a website or even very cheap ways to build a website. Uh, and now I've got my portfolio, I've got my showreel, I've got examples of the Twitter threads or the website thumb thumbnails or graphic whatever that I can make. 
We now go into step number three, which is turning this into a paid gig. And at this point, it's pretty easy to, to, to turn it into a paid gig because if you've got like decent samples of work and you're actually good at the thing, which you will be because you're following tutorials on the internet and improving your skills over time, and you've got decent testimonials from the people that you've worked for for free, at this point, you can now start reaching out to those same people and say, hey, this is how much I would charge per hour if we wanted to work together. What do you think? And they probably say yes, if it's reasonable. And you can then reach out to other YouTubers and say, or other people in this market that you care about and offer your service for free initially, and then make like a page that has your prices and you can have different pricing plans. And essentially you can then very easily turn this into a paid gig because your work will speak for itself. Of course, I'd be documenting the whole journey of doing that as well, reading books about the psychology of pricing, figuring out how to price my services for the hour, reading everything I could get my hands on about how to be a freelancer, because at this point I'd be a freelancer and I'd be sharing my journey. I'd be documenting the process as I went along on my blog and on my Twitter. Then after doing this for a while, after building up some money in the bank, I'd be moving on to step four, which is to productize the service. I've got a friend, Robin Waite, who's written a really good book about this. It's called Take Your Shot. And that book changed the way that I approach pricing because basically it tell, it's, it's like genuinely a very engaging storybook. Uh, and it tells the story of this golf teacher who was charging by the hour. And then one day he gets a client who wants to learn golf, but this client happens to be a business coach. And the business coach talks him through and coaches him about how he can convert his hourly pricing into a, a suite of products, like, you know, six lessons for X amount, or, you know, this is the outcome you're gonna get. This is the money back guarantee. And it's just so interesting seeing how you can just transform your income basically overnight by moving from an hourly charging rate to a productized charging rate. And so again, if I was a video editor, I'd be putting together some kind of package, like, I don't know, four videos a month for X amount of dollars. If I was a graphic designer, I'd be doing like three thumbnails per video, four times a month or four times a week or three times a week for this amount. If I was a writer, I'd be talking about this sort of Twitter thread for this amount and here is the money back guarantee. All of the things like that. Read the book, take your shot, it's very good. And so with me, for example, right now, I do almost nothing that charges by the hour because I don't like charging by the hour. Instead, I think, how can I turn this into a product? How can I turn it into a course? We've got a part-time YouTuber Academy, which is my live online course. People always say, like the message be like, hey, how much do you charge for one-on-one -on -one coaching? And I always say, like, I don't, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching because I don't believe in charging by the hour. Instead, I believe in creating products that can then you know, offer that same service to multiple people with a more like, yeah, productized system. And in fact, right now I'm working on my own productivity for lazy people course, which you can sign up to the mailing list for link in the video description. That is taking all of my insights about productivity that I've picked up over the last like decade of my life and turning it into a nicely packaged course that includes my productivity system for lazy people. So yeah, link to the mailing list in the video description if you wanna get early bird access to that at some point when it comes out. And finally, that moves us on to step five. Once we've productized our services and now we've got even more money in the bank, at that point, I'd be looking to hire people. I'd be reading books like The E-Myth Revisited and Traction and these sorts of business books that once, you, once you're a profitable business as a solo entrepreneur slash freelancer, how do you then bring other people on board either as freelancers or part-time or even full-time if you've got the money for that? How do you bring other people on board to help leverage your own skills and your own time? And so I'm pretty confident if I were to start from scratch over the course of maybe two, three years, I'd get to the point where my editing business for YouTubers or my writing business for YouTubers or my graphic design business for YouTubers, that would get to the point where I could comfortably be able to hire people, offload some of the work for myself, leverage my own time and my own skills, and then think about building a business around it so that the results, i.e. the videos or the graphics or the writing or whatever my thing is, so that the results would be generated by the business and by the system, as Michael Gerber talks about in the E-Myth Revisited, link in the video description if you wanna check it out. The results would be delivered by the system rather than by the individuals themselves. And of course, throughout all five of these steps, I'd be building up my own personal audience by documenting what it's like to build a business for YouTubers from the ground up. At this point, I probably have a few thousand, maybe even tens of thousands of subscribers on my email list or on my Twitter. And then if I really wanted to, I could turn it into a course about, hey, here's how I <laughs> did this thing over the last three years. Here's how I started from scratch and grew a six figure income by video editing. And here's how you can do the same. If I wanted to, I could do that further down the line. But you know, to be honest, at that point, I'd have my successful business. I'd be having fun. I'd be profitable. I wouldn't really need to peddle courses to my audience in that context. Now, if you're in the market for a monetizable skill that you can learn that would add value to a lot of different people, one thing I always recommend to people is to learn how to code because coding is like such an in-demand skill these days. Like there is a constant short shortage of software, software engineers, software developers, and it's like, if you know how to code to a reasonable standard, it's actually not that hard to get a job where you're either working for someone else and doing coding type stuff for them, or you're building your own stuff, building your own businesses, building your own websites and using your coding knowledge to do that well. And certainly learning how to code was how I got started on this entire journey of entrepreneurship when I was around 13 years old. 
Back in the day, I used to use really crappy resources like free stuff on the internet and random books that I would get from charity shops. These days, there are tons of other better ways to learn how to code. One of my favorites is by doing an online course over at Brilliant, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard, Brilliant is a fantastic platform for online courses in maths, science, and computer science. And the courses are really great because they're interactive, they're friendly, they're engaging, and they make it fun to learn the thing. And there are so many people that I know who have started, who have thought about learning how to code and done some like online course, and it's just so boring that they just never actually bring themselves to doing it. Personally, my favorite courses on Brilliant are their computer science series. Uh, when I was applying to med school, I was torn between med school and computer science. And I, I went with medicine in the end, but I always had this kind of love of computer science and love of coding in, in my mind. And so the Brilliant courses on computer algorithms and like how cryptocurrencies work are all really interesting. So if that sounds up your street and if you want to level up your thinking or learn how to code or get pro at computer science, head over to brilliant.org forward slash Ali. And the first 200 people to hit that link in the video description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So summing up the journey, three principles. Principle number one, build and public. Principle number two, provide value for free without the expectation of anything in return. And principle number three, target the market that has the people that you already like and think you would get on with. And then we build the five steps on top of that. Number one, learn a monetizable skill that helps that market. Number two, offer that service for free, preferably without permission while documenting your journey. Number three, start charging for it. Number four, productize your services and read the book, take your shot. And number five, at that point, you can hire and expand and turn this into your own business empire. If you like this video and you want to learn more ways of generating passive income, building business, all that kind of stuff, check out this video over here, which is like nine passive income ideas. And it shows how I make $27,000 per week at the time of that recording. It's a little bit more now uh, in, in passive income by following these methods. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you want already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.